Before moving on, let's focus on why we don't like short keys. Uh, we talked about this and we said that it has a key length of 56 bits. So this means that a secret key can take 2 to the 56 different values and this number is computed like this. So today's uh, GPUs or dedicated devices are really fast. For instance, we can perform 2 to the 32 encryptions of this in a second by just using a, a regular GPU. So, and GPUs are getting faster and faster. So even daily users, video gamers can use GPUs to break this. Uh, this means that by breaking this, I mean you can try every key, every possible key to find the correct one. And there are this many secret, possible secret keys, so uh, video gamers can get together and uh, break a desk key in a few days. So we have some algorithms like present which supports 80-bit key, so this number significantly increases here. And if you move to AES, the 2 to the 128 is this and so on and so forth. So as far as we know, uh, today's technology is not uh, good enough to try every possible key for AES that uses 128-bit keys. And NIST and many other organizations suggest that 112 bits are secure enough to use because this security comes from triple DES algorithm. But uh, People think that since lightweight designs are algorithms that needs to run fast, they think that using a short key for these algorithms is okay. But uh, short keys like 56 bits, 64 bits, or even 80 bits can be broken in practice just by brute force attacks. So you have to use at least 128 bits to have a good security upper bound. And by looking at the uh, technological advancements, we can see that this key, bits, this key length would be secure in the uh, upcoming years. Because even if we have very fast computers or GPUs or dedicated devices, and let's say that we have an organization that can perform 2 to the 80 encryptions in a second. Even if you can do it in a second, in a year you will only do 2 to the 110 trials, which is far less than this number. So you need millions of years to break AES just by brute force. So it wouldn't work. But only problem that we can foresee is the uh, technological advancement. That is, if someone can build a quantum general purpose quantum computer, then uh, the security of these key lengths actually uh, becomes halved. So 256 bit key would provide 128 bit security, but this would be enough for us anyway. So using an algorithm uh, like AES that, has, that uses 256 bits would be secure even if somebody builds a general purpose quantum computer. But here the point is that using any key that is shorter than this makes no sense to me. I mean, as I told you, 112 bits, it's also secure, but there is no point on living at the edge. So any algorithm that uses short keys are not good candidate to be used in IoT or in daily life. So uh, some people think that lightweight cryptography means short keys, but it is not. That is the main point of the slide. So let's look at the paradigm shift in the technology and why the lightweight cryptography, why this area that we call lightweight cryptography arise. So it started by the evolutionary change in computing and information technologies. Decades ago, we had one computer and many users. So they had the monitors like terminal that's uh, so that everybody uses the same computer and get the results and so on. But due to personal computers, we reached an age where we have one computer for one user. But today things change. So we have many computers, but one user. 
So, and then by computers, I'm talking about every device that has some computational power. So we have smartphones, tablets, uh, smartwatches, but uh, we have even smaller devices like sensors and so on. So uh, one user has a lot of devices and actually this led to the uh, age of Internet of Things. So many IoT systems run on resource constrained platforms, for example, mobile tokens without battery, radio frequency identifiers or medical implants that do not allow change of batteries and so on. So these, all of these devices work on resource constrained platforms. And many IoT devices are extremely cost sensitive because they are deployed in extremely high values. So trying to put a yes encryption in such a device would significantly increase the cost of building these device, uh, IoT devices. So having lightweight algorithms makes them uh, cheaper to produce. So industry needed uh, lightweight cryptography for at least 20 years, but it became an active research area in academia over the last 10 or 15 years. So there is a gap between this need and the uh, involvement of cryptographers. Thus, industry deployed several proprietary self-made algorithms and many disasters happen. So we can give a lot of examples here and some of them I will briefly mention like Keylog and MyFair. Keylog is used for remote keyless entry and MyFair Classic is used in smart cars for uh, contactless uh, communication. So Keylog is a proprietary hardware dedicated block cipher that uses a nonlinear feedback shift register. It is used for keyless entry systems like cars, garages, buildings, and etc. And it was used by many companies, many famous car companies. So literature has a lot of attacks for this uh, cipher, but I. Uh, summarized it in the slide so there are attacks so that the side channel attacks that can reveal both the secret key of a remote transmitter and the manufacturer key stored in a receiver a remote control can be cloned from only 10 power traces allowing for a practical key recovery in minutes so you can actually break into a car or somebody if you can uh, get close to the person when for instance when they are trying to uh, get into their cars. Once knowing the manufacturer key, the secret key of a remote control can be obtained from a distance and replicated just by eavesdropping at most two messages without physical access to the device. This is very important. And finally, you can perform a denial of service attack. The internal counter of the receiver, like garage door or car door, etc., which makes it possible for a uh, legitimate uh, user to open the door can be actually reset. So when it is reset, the remote control will not work. So the garage door or the car door won't open. So uh, all of these devices has to be replaced afterwards due to these attacks. Another example is A51 Stream Cipher. It was developed in 1987 and became a GSM standard in Europe and USA. A deliberately weakened version A52 was deployed in 1987 for certain export regions. Initially, this algorithm was kept secret, but it was reverse engineered in 1999. So it uses a 64-bit key. That is the problem here. And the design is very simple. It just uses three linear feedback shift registers. So uh, the design was to be lightweight like this because at the time, in 1980s, uh, the devices, the mobile phones were not that powerful. So the algorithm has to be lightweight like this. But choosing a short key and this design uh, led to attacks. Uh, currently it is replaced with A53 which is actually the customer block cipher. So after 3G uh, we replaced this algorithm but uh, it is still used. So you can perform a 
uh, exhaustive search on this uh, cipher, but you can also perform a pre-computed table, which is like performing an exhaustive search attack beforehand to be used in the future. So in real time, you can listen to any GSM communication that is encrypted with A51. But the problem is that I took this picture a few years ago from this report. It says that in Turkey, GSM operators are still using A51 because in order to use A53, both the mobile phones of the communicating parties and the base stations should support this algorithm. So uh, even today, we can observe that some people are still communicating using this encryption algorithm. So it is not secure. So another disaster happened by, with MyFair Classic cards. So MyFair Classic 1K, which is for their memory, they have one kilobytes of memory. Uh, they were pr produced by NXP semiconductors and they are used in contactless smart cards and proximity cards. Produce more than 10 billion smart card chips and 150 million reader modules. Maybe these numbers doubled or tripled in the last few years. I don't know. And it uses Crypto One Stream Cypher, which is designed by this company itself. It wasn't designed by the crypto community. So uh, it is used in public transportation, electronic toll collection, loyalty cards, event ticketing, and car parking, and so on and so forth. But the problem is that the initial design had many weaknesses. So this it can be broken in few seconds. So you could. Uh, clone a smart card initially that was for the initial designs could be cloned in a very short time so some uh, precautions are taken so these cards are hardened but even in the best uh, versions in order for this to card to work uh, all of the secret keys inside this card should be randomly generated and they shouldn't be using any default keys. Otherwise, capturing these cards for just uh, five or 10 minutes uh, and performing some side channel attacks, you can clone the card. And even if you don't have physical access, by uh, just uh, uh, getting in touch with the card just for one second, so which is enough for to get close to the person who's carrying the card. You can go home and perform operations to clone the card. And by our GPU implementations, we can clone these cards in a few hours. But again, in order for this to work, either the card should be old ones, which are not hardened, or the, it should be the new ones, but at least one of the keys inside the card should be one of the default keys so that we can guess it and by using that default key we can capture the remaining keys. So it is still used today but the hardened versions are used but again in order for it to be secure all of the secret keys must be uh, randomly generated. So. I think in London metros they initially they were using my fair classic cards but after these attacks, they have to replace it with something uh, stronger. And if you want to know the model of your smart card that you are carrying on, you can, if you have an Android phone, you can just install some software like NFC tools and check if your mobile phone has NFC capability. You can check the card. So my fair classic 1K should appear like this. And uh, if you're interested, you can use a Proxmark device to attack the card that you are carrying. So many disasters happened, but then cryptographers uh, realized that there is need for lightweight crypto algorithms. So they started to design their own algorithms. So initial designs mainly focused on low hardware footprint. But it is not realistic to have a single cipher to satisfy all needs. But at the end, that is what we need, unfortunately. To fit within constraint settings, lightweight ciphers rely on simpler round functions or minimal key schedules. The simpler structure of many of these ciphers may lend itself to new attacks. So this is one of the uh, 
problems with lightweight designs. So uh, most of the old algorithms like this or AES uh, are secured to newly found cryptanalysis results because most of the new cryptanalytic attacks most of the time found on lightweight designs because since they are designed in a very lightweight world style so that they have uh, simpler run functions or minimal key schedules uh, we can discover new cryptanalysis techniques and break this cipher so uh, it is not an easy task to design a uh, lightweight algorithm that is uh, res secure against known cryptanalysis techniques and also for the unknown ones so we have a lot of lightweight log ciphers uh, in this picture we have uh, only a few of them the initial ones mostly focused on hardware footprints and some of them became iss standards present and clavier are currently the iso iec lightweight block cipher standards height is also a lightweight design but it is ISO, iso and iec block cipher standard but this cipher is broken in a theoretical way, so it is not, I wouldn't suggest it to be used in practice. But we have other algorithms that focuses on low memory consumption on small embedded processors. So these designs are good at this. There are designs that focus on low latency and there are designs that is, has some side channel protection. So, but this is just a short list. We have a lot of block ciphers designed for lightweight uh, devices, let's say. We also have uh, stream cipher standards. These ISO standards contain two stream ciphers, you know, Core and Trivium. But as you can see, Trivium has the key size of 80 bits, which I don't recommend to be used in practice. We have three hash functions. Uh, again as an ISS, ISO standard photons pointed and lesamta LW and we have lightweight message authentication code standards lightweight to sudix key mode and chasky 12 so as you can see in the last two slides I talk about a lot of standards so in order to put them in an IoT device is not an easy task and actually this is not a must so I haven't heard any IoT device that comes with these algorithms so that is one of the problems so in the liter in the we are uh, manufacturers are producing IoT devices uh, in a very very fast way but they don't come with uh, good security or with good cryptographic algorithms 